everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dad Games Badly. We're back here today with some more NHL 21 and our Tulsa Bores Two Ways to Win Draft of Glory franchise. Now, our last season did not go surprisingly well uh, after the season beforehand. However, we did have a fantastic draft deal. Um, somebody who either had to make the team this season or go back to juniors. Um, so I made a change so honestly first lines kanapka uh, has gone down from a franchise to an elite this year uh, unfortunately um, he will probably stay at an elite uh, which is still decent um, however it would have been nice to keep him in a franchise uh, beforehand so uh, we'll see what happens by the end of the year with him uh, the now 26 year old uh, Antonovich at 24 is a medium elite 87 overall and Volkov is a low top six at 26 overall but an 89 overall had a fantastic season last year um like honestly you have <laughs> i'm sorry this is like la really fucked up on this one like i'm gonna be completely honest look at that puck skills category 92 offensive awareness could be a bit higher with everything else compared However, that shooting category, like, does Kanopka doesn't even have that. And he's a fifth round pick, Volkov. They let him go. They they didn't even give him a chance. He didn't even he he didn't even play. He played three seasons in Russia. He had a fantastic season in his final year. And honestly, to be completely honest, and you look at his numbers. You know, 24 points in 51 games. Not bad for... So if he's 20... Sorry, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. So there's a 20-year-old in, in the men's league in Russia. Let's say. Um, 24 points. And the next year, 41. Shooting at 16%. Now, you know, honestly, you can't... You could understand. But then he comes to the HL. You wouldn't sign him after that last season and be like, hmm, maybe there's something there. And you bring him to the North America and you let him sit and you let him play in the AHL. And he played one season, 69 points in 82 games. That's pretty dang good for a 21 year old. Hmm, 22, put him in the NHL, give him a shot. Uh, 73 points in 82 games. 87 and 82, 92 and 82, 92 and 82. Two back-to-back 92-point -back seasons, Gustav Volkov. LA, I'm sorry, you fucked up. Uh, <laughs> Gilbert DeRosier is here. Uh, he is another one of those undrafted uh, low elites that we picked up in 84 overall. Um, his real specialty is puck skills, um, so it would be nice to get him with a sniper. Uh, have him with Trent Smith, who is a seventh round pick. He is a playmaker as well. Uh, I might change that up um, because Connor Brown is more of a two way. Uh, LeBlonde, who is the best? Gage Holland. All right, we're going to do that. Obviously, Connor. We'll put him here. I just kind of want to even that out a bit. Um, puck skills. Has no puck control, but everything else is great. So, Emmanuel. <laughs> that skating is ridiculous. Uh, Jace Coe is more of just a passer, shot blocker, defensive aware. Uh, okay. Connor Brown is obviously just all around two way. And our captain, Korobov, is just all around two way. Jamel Smith is here because uh, we needed a center and he fits in the lineup where we'd have like a 74 here. Uh, and Eklund, Ekl <laughs> I want to say Eklund, but it's obviously Magnus Eklund. Um, just stop trying to combine two words to make a new word. Um, okay, so basically you're just going to have two basically rounded second lines there all right i don't hate that all right defensively raymo coronan and Dwayne mccauley are here 
Uh, basically, these are other draft picks of ours, two other first rounders. Uh, you know, defensively aware, which is good. His skills aren't that great. Macaulay as well. So fairly defensive first pair. Cornet, uh, who we picked up from the Montreal Canadiens. Again, not really a, a good skater. Um, however, he is pretty well-rounded defensively, um, which is nice. Uh, and physically, uh, it's nice to have that big body pump it around then you have Maxime Fleury who is here obviously he is one of the faster guys on the team he can stick check he can shot block he's not defensively aware at all though unfortunately uh, offensive aware um, he is a very offensive aware two-way uh, defender for us and then Jack Froats uh, who we took in on six last year was slated to go ninth uh, very well rounded at such a young age can skate can defense uh, can do a little bit of offense here and there and is slightly physical which will uh, come with the years uh, and Reuben Earl as well um, again not such a great skater uh, two-way defender seventh round pick uh, he's not terrible we're going to give him a shot this season there are some other guys that we could have brought up uh, but he is an 80 overall and gave us quite a boost now here's the biggest um, I guess progress that we'd had. I was a little worried about goaltending as it was showing uh, Hamill as a 79 uh, at the beginning of the offseason. Um, and then when it was over, he was an 83. So again, his stick side, not good. Uh, glove low is getting better. Uh, angles is better now. Rebound and recovery is great. Poke check is great. Uh, durability, endurance, vision, all great. Speed is decent. Agility, aggressiveness, not super important skills. Uh, and then Ralph Leach is making his chance here as a 76 overall. Uh, we're going to give him that shot as we you'll see in a minute who is down in the AHL. Uh, all right, so let's go there first. We have Maltby, Rocky Maltby, another medium uh, elite player that we'd picked up. Um, again, has some areas to work on. His agility is great. That's fantastic. And his speed, uh, so he can skate. He's 23, though. Uh, he is a 72 overall, so we're going to give him a shot this year. And then Jan Chatan, uh, he is here as well. He is 20, uh, so we're going to give him a shot as a backup. Uh, again, pretty well-rounded. Nothing really standing out other than agility, durability, and speed as high ups and recovery. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. He's got a 50 in the puck playing frequency, so that is good. And then down here, uh, Yaro Bendahan, um, Lassie Ranta, Cody Little... Uh, who is 23, so we're really hoping he takes a step this season. Hudson Fashing is here to fill a spot. Same with Adam Lowry, Henrik Olvestad, uh, Dwight Cook, Dominic Toninato, uh, Desmond England is here, Emil Lambert, Marcus Ab, uh, Dimitri Datsuk to fill that out. And then on defense, uh, Barabal, Poirier, Williams, uh, Card, Caberle, and German are all here. And they're all fairly high up. Um, uh, guys and then scratch players we have Callie Enroth uh, Terrell Skinner and Hugo Steiff who are all medium sevenths or lower so not too bad I'm going to make one quick change as I do every year and I always forget until late into it uh, Kanapka uh, I mean Ramo you're getting a seat here uh, da, 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 all skaters. Uh, uh, Kanapka, thank you. All right, perfect. So uh, that is that. Connor Brown is still our captain. None of that has changed. Um, we are well within our contracts, I believe. I think I gave Adam Lowry some money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not well within, but we are within. Uh, just which is fantastic and let's go ahead and sim it to the uh, we'll sim up to the preseason games decline Ryan Donato would be nice but no thank you uh, Travis Siemens gonna reject the offer Mark Vigor thank you Vigiri I don't know how to pronounce your name I'm sorry sir uh, here we are at the beginning of the preseason. Let's just take a quick look at what our overalls are now uh, so we don't have to do it when we get into the regular season. 
an 88, an 86, and a 77. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Gold hunting's a little bit low, uh, but honestly, in NHL, you can win with low-end goalies. So let's just go ahead and advance through these days here. There's a loss to the Jets. And let's go who, if we can beat St. Louis, we do 5-2. to two. How about Dallas? Would be nice. Bing, bing, that's a win. Lots of five-goal games here in the preseason. Minnesota's up next. 5-2, to two. let's keep that streak going. Nashville, can, who's going to get five here? You or us? No, nope, that's one nothing shutout loss, and then a five to four loss to Chicago, and then here we are, five to one. So our record was four two and one, not too bad. Vic Kanopka had nine points. Volkov, Smith, Trent Smith playing second line minutes, seventh round. Uh, pretty, pretty decent putting up like that. Connor Brown, DeRozier. Uh, let's see, Antonovic only had... <laughs> sorry, Antonovic only had six assists um, in seven games. You know, that's that's terrible. You should be better. Uh, goaltending, Hamill, really good. Leached, not good enough. Um, not sure how I feel about that. He might get hung out to dry. He is a medium starter, so I kind of feel bad. Um, that maybe his growth will be stunted a little bit this year. Um, but as long as we do what we can, we'll do what we can. So let's go ahead and sim to the regular season. I don't care about waivers. And I don't care about... Oh, I do care about scout assignments because we hired a guy and brought him back. Uh, what was your name? Benin. Uh, the O. Into the OHL you go, sir. It's nice because usually that's where I take them out of and then I don't have to put them back into Europe or something. Uh, but I don't actually pay attention. It's just usually luck-based when I do it. So uh, let's go advance. Advance to LA here and we'll flip over two back-to-back -back wins for Kansas City, which is great. Kirk Card has three points in those two games. Uh, and we'll take a quick look because I would like to compare us to an actually NHL set team. Uh, and LA is our shot, so we are an 88, 86, 77. Uh, they are a 90, 92, and a 75 goaltending. So that's fantastic. Uh, let's just advance that first day here and see how that game goes. 3 to 1 win. Vic Kanopka has two assists. Beautiful. Uh, let's go ahead into the calendar and we will sim through the first month, keep an eye on things, how everything is going. Uh, Colorado is up next in the game against Carolina. That's a win. That's a win. That's three wins to start the season. Uh, the team is basically ours with only Jamel Smith really being uh, the only person that uh, we did not luck out with. Or that is not drafted by us or signed by us because someone let them go. All right, so we finished the month 7-2-2. Two, and two. We went 7-0 and oh until we lost the two final games of the season, 4-3 loss and a 6-3 loss uh, to the Flyers. So let's take a quick look here at who is scoring the goals. Obviously, Volkov has nine. Fantastic. Uh, Kanopka has 11, Antonovich 10, all assists. Uh, he's just dishing. Trent Smith has six, Ekholm and Brown. Uh, have five each, not too bad. Cornet's got four. Cornet ha in seven games in the preseason had none, but has four and nine uh, in this round. Uh, where is Jackie Froats? Jack Froats is a plus four, has three points. Dude, that's beautiful. And one game winning goal and a power play point on 15 minutes of ice time. Uh, no fights, one takeaway, two giveaways, nine blocks, six hits. Jack, welcome to the league, big boy. Very, very happy about that. Uh, all right, cool. So let's go ahead and just sim month by month now. Uh, the team looks to be good, or at least after one month, it's October. Don't get your hopes up. Uh, let's go ahead. I don't care about that. We did not look at the draft picks. Now it seems that we won't need to. Eight, two, and one. Uh, after a shutout loss, shootout loss to 
Columbus, and then back-to-back -back wins against the Boston Bruins and the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and then we beat Detroit, then lose to Florida 6-3. to Nationals up next, a 5-2 win. Chicago, we lose to them. 12-4-1 here midway through the month. Um, ooh, Pierre Engvall, no thank you. No thank you. All right, perfect, let's go. Uh, Dallas is up next. We really have to win these games against our conference rivals. That's a shootout, shootout loss. 5-3 uh, loss to Minnesota. As I say that, we have now lost three games this month to conference rivals. Uh, we beat Winnipeg, though. so I don't have anybody that we need to worry about for that. So we end the, the next month 13-7-3. and three. Uh, We lost eight more games and only won six more. So... Um, Got to keep those points up. How are we doing here? We'll see in a second. Uh, third place in our division. It's pretty close, though. Uh, so we got to keep an eye on things. Let's head back here. Take a look at who's scoring all those points. Vic Kanopka has 29 now. Let's just double-check lineups and make sure kind of everybody is, is producing where they need to be. If we need to lower somebody or move somebody up, we will. Uh, okay, you're fine. You are fine. And you are also fine. DeRosier, 14 points is fine. 21 for Trent Smith. Uh, Gage Holland might be playing a little bit higher than he should be. You know what, Gage? You should be fine here, buddy. You've got the skills to pay the bills. Um, they should just be passing to you. Who is the best? Oh, that's most likely why, because Trent Smith can't. Trent, Trent Smith can't face off, <laughs> apparently. I didn't see that, but he's a big boy. Use that body, Trent. You'll learn. Uh, that's a skill we're going to need you to focus on. Emil LeBlond. <sighs> Emil. I mean, you have such great passing, but your offensive awareness is 72. So you just skate around. So, Emil, I'm going to probably move you down. Uh, Korobov. Um, not the same problem. You should be fine. I'll move you up. Give you a shot. Uh, Gage, you're going to move down a line, buddy. I just... Obviously, C Connor Brown produces 13 points. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, Ekholm, though, has 11. So I wouldn't mind moving you up a line. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's give Ekholm a shot here instead of Gage. Um, everybody else... Yeah, I don't hate where everybody else is defensively. Let's take a look here. Uh, Cornyn, you are fine. Macaulay is fine. Flurry and Cornet. Does Cornet like to fight? It doesn't say here. That's stupid. Um, okay, Earl and Jackie Froats. Uh, five points in 23 games. Uh, so he's kind of slowed down. Or Corna has slowed down. Um, but you know what? Defensively, they're not terrible together, so I don't hate it. Um, and I think if I switch anything else out there, that's not going to work. Uh, I didn't get to see goalies, which I wanted to do, so let me quickly go back there. All right, Hamill. Not great. Leached. Fantastic. All right, cool. Not the problem I thought we were going to have, but uh, we're just going to keep plugging along. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Goaltending in this game is terrible. All right, let's go to January 1st and see how that goes. Can we beat Anaheim here to start the month off well? We do not. Calgary, we do. However, uh, I do like to see that. Uh, Central scouting rankings. We don't care. We'll wait till the end of the season at this point. 7-3 loss to Ottawa. Can we beat the Oilers? We do in a nice 3 to nothing shutout. 8-5 loss to the Rangers. How about Buffalo? They're terrible, we know. And we lose to them. Vegas and that too. So 15-12-3 now this season. All right. It looks like our, our first month is starting to uh, pass us by. Uh, and there seems to be a bigger problem than we thought. Um, maybe it's Hamill's stick side. Um, I'm not quite sure. But now 17, 17, and 3 in January. 
So we've seen this team just fall from grace. We are still only uh, a point out of a playoff, a wild card spot, and two points out of a playoff spot. So uh, not hard to come back from. However, two and eight in the last ten uh, is not good. Obviously, after that month, the Eckholm experiment. Uh, did not necessarily fail. Okay. So he has 14 points in 37 games. He did not have that before, I don't think. Let's keep an eye on that. All right. Defensively. All right. Everybody just started sucking ass here. No, I don't want to take Earl out. Alright, let's put Zubov here. And we're going to bring him in. And Leech has been doing... You know, they're not doing terrible. Like, goals against averages are bad. Uh, but that's obviously a lot of issues that we're just not getting... Well, we're getting goals, it looks like, too, but I just don't understand. Kanaka has 46 points, so that's not the problem. That's a, I think it's really outside of that top, the top two lines. We're not getting a lot of additional scoring. Um, but we're just going to have to keep plugging along. Let's see if it's bringing Zubov in, who is an offensive defenseman that we drafted at one point, uh, and seeing if that helps us. 4-2, 5-4 there. Uh, let's see, 5-3 win... Philly, can we beat them? No, Vancouver, I know we can. Columbus, there we go. Boston, we beat them before, but I'm sure they have a hate on for us. They do. Winnipeg, we beat as well. That's good to see. Uh, Detroit and Florida up next. Can we get through both of them? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. We do not, but we pick up a pity point against Florida. Uh, we lose to Nashville. Like, honestly, we've won three games this month. Four, five. So 23 and 22. We're further out of the playoffs than we were. That is unfortunate. Um, doesn't look like there's much that I can do in regards to any of that. Uh, Radislav Antonovich. People I'm more concerned about. Sorry. Is going into edit lines. And so Echo. Yeah, the Echo experiment has failed. Okay, we'll make that change. Okay, so I'm not like terribly upset with the bottom six. It needs to be better. Um, Trent Smith has 32 assists somehow. Sure. Has your face-offs gone up, Trent? It has a little bit. That's good. And like you guys, I'm not worried about. Uh, goalies, like, not terrible. Defense, how did Zubov do? Two goals, plus seven. Flurry, little numbers are a little bit better. Like, these numbers are fine down here. I mean, not, they're not terrible numbers, but you'd like your top pair to be a little bit better, so... Can't really complain. And let's go back to the calendar. The uh, trade deadline is coming up here at the end of the month, so we will continue on past that. Dallas up next. Can we get a win? We cannot. How about Minnesota? There we finally go. That's good to see. Washington beat them. Leafs go Boars. Heck yes, let's go. Uh, beat the Sharks. Can we beat Anaheim? We didn't last month and we weren't able to this month. Calgary, we lose 4 to nothing. Ottawa's up next. We could beat them. I know we can. That's a loss. Uh, Edmonton, come on. Let's see that W. No, Rangers. My goodness, we win four games in a row and then just shit the bed until we beat Buffalo. And then we finish off the month quite well. So we'll keep our current trade block. 
and we'll, we'll continue simming here. Uh, looks like we were able to win the last three games of the season, so it was a much better of the month, rather. Uh, so we are now still quite far, seven points out of a playoff spot. Um, I don't know if we're going to make it. Uh, Anaheim trades those two guys and a third round pick for Jamie Drysdale, Kozlov, and, Dave, and a guy named Kampf. Congratulations. And that was the biggest trade. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what happened there. And we are sitting... Oh, wow. We are in it for a playoff spot. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. So we'll take a look here at lines and just see how everybody is doing. I mean, I'm not concerned with that top line. The second line I'm not concerned with. Connor Brown is fine here. Uh, Korobov, Co, Holland. All right, I shouldn't have made that chance. Maybe we would have had a better shot in the beginning of the season. Who knows? Uh, Kornin, McCauley have switched their num numbers to positive. Uh, Zubov and Maxime Fleury have been fine. Jackie Froats and Earl have been eh. I wonder if I do that. All right, we'll just make that change there. Go to look at goalies. Leached. And Hamill have turned their numbers around over that last month, which is great to see. Uh, so we might still be in it for a, a wild card spot. It's not going to be a great position for us to be in, unfortunately. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, looks like a third round pick and Mason Appleton for some players. Carl Gunstrom got traded. Uh, for again two players Dimitri Saprikin and a fifth round pick for Trocek a fourth and a fifth uh, da, 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 da. Let's go Some players for some picks between New York and or the Islanders and Vancouver Adam Zichka and a pick for a second round pick for Vancouver to Vegas Quentin Byfield goes from LA to San Jose with Nick Ritchie and Essa Lindell for a second and a player, that player better be good if you're giving up Essa Lindell and Quinn Byfield, man. Uh, let's see. Columbus trades a player and some picks for a pick and Warren Fogel and some other things. Uh, Zerdev and some Franson guy. We saw that one for Drysdale. Danton Heinen from Minnesota, goes from Minnesota uh, for a player and a third round pick to Minnesota interesting 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 we are going to see how the rest of the season plays off uh, let's go ahead how much how many games are left quite a few we have a whole month still so let's go ahead up until April 1st let's go through the month of March let's see the Quinn Byfield list the LA Kings hold out not well lose to Colorado and lose to Carolina but the Habs are up next and we beat them four to two Devils on the Saturday night, we lose. Tampa on Sunday, 8-2 win. Arizona on the Tuesday, the 13th, that's another win. St. Louis coming up here, that's a win, 3-1. So 35-31-4, and four. A lose to Philly and Vancouver, but we get the pity point. 77 points on this season. Beat Columbus, Boston up next. Beat them and beat Winnipeg as well. Uh, Detroit, lose. Florida, lose. And we have five games left on the season. Now, let's take a look and see where we are. We're probably playing for a spot. No, we are in. We are currently in. All right. Well, we haven't clinched yet. We have a game in hand over the Avs. Uh, two points and a game in hand over the Wild. And three points over and a game in hand over Chicago. Predators and Jets are out. Stars are basically going to clinch very, very soon. Let's go ahead and secure a spot against the Preds. We get the win. And has it been confirmed? It has not been confirmed. We now have 84 points. We have a two-point lead on the Avs in fourth. 
So to make sure we stay out of the wildcard spot, we have to beat the Blackhawks, who are three points behind, and a, we have a game in hand. Can we win? We don't. We lose 7-0. That is not good. I don't like that. We are still in a playoff spot. Uh, Blackhawks are a point behind, but we have a game in hand. We play the Penguins next. Can we get that done? We cannot, but we get a pity point. We have a game in hand and two points up on the Blackhawks for third in the division. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Everybody is securing spots. Vegas is up next and we are out. Uh, but I believe we have a game in hand. We have two games in hand on the Avs. So let's go ahead and get these wins. There's a loss. We need a win. We need a win here against the Islanders, and we lose 7-5. to five. And with that, we're out of a playoff spot. <sighs> wow. Wow. Please don't let my sadness overshadow that Gustav Volkov has had his best season ever with 106 points. Uh, Antonovich with 105 or sorry, Vikanaka with 105, Antonovich with 104, and Gustav Volkovs with 106. This first line is unstoppable. If I had a better goalie, a couple like more solid defensive pieces, I think we'd be in a top spot. Gilbert DeRosier had... What, 43? Would have liked to see him get about 10 more. Uh, Trent Smith was fantastic with 72 or 71 points. Uh, Connor Brown moved up and down the lineup and did quite well for himself. Uh, Korobov with 24. Uh, Jace Coe with 30. And Gage Holland with 33. Uh, don't hate that. Uh, Emmanuel LeBlanc had 18. Get Jamel Smith had 24. And Jamel... Dude, you are solid, buddy. 24 points on the fourth line, playing 12 minutes a night, and a minus three. Dude, that, that's a positive for a bottom pair, like a bottom playing forward. Uh, Magnus Ekholm kind of moved up and down. Um, he still had 19 points. Not bad. Uh, Would have liked to see him be a bit better. Unfortunately, um, he wasn't able to make things happen with such a low offensive awareness. Uh, going into defense, obviously Coronin had 27 points, uh, was a positive by the end of the season. Ruben Earl had 9, was also positive at the end of the season. Uh, Max Fleury uh, finished the season with 32 points, uh, minus 11, however, but 22, basically 22 minutes a night. Uh, Vitaly Zubov came in and played 45 games with 6 points on the night. Uh, was pretty good. Probably should have had him in from the beginning. Jackie Froats in his rookie season is now an 80 overall. 16 uh, points minus 8, 15 minutes a night. Uh, Dwayne McCauley kind of up and down the lineup. Was a minus 1 at the end of the season, but a plus or 18 points on the season. So not too bad. Not too bad. Goaltending wise, Ralph Leached uh, for the 76 overall came in and did quite well. 60, 23 games played. Uh, 5 wins. Uh, he was the problem. However, they were not big losses. Um, and then Dustin Hamill came in. Uh, he cleaned up his season. was a, was a plus nine hundred. Um, Thirty four wins in sixty seven games. You know that's over fifty percent. Good job, Dustin. Uh, I would like to see your stick get worked on this summer, sir. Uh, but we will figure that out. Cornet had eight points and 50 penalty minutes, and Bruce Manning did not see a game. Uh, however, it really wouldn't have helped anything. Uh, so, honestly, I'm not upset. This team pushed. This team pushed for a playoff spot. That's what I want. I wanted to build a team that was able to push for a playoff spot. That was our team. Yes, we have Jamel Smith. Yes, we have a couple guys we picked up off free agency. But we haven't really picked up a lot of them. We picked up a couple low elites. That's all I'm picking. I'm not, I'm not searching... The free agency list i'm picking the older guys to fill in spots and if there is a guy who gets left out by his team who fits who is a two-way i don't mind picking him up for his entry-level deal as long as it's his entry-level deal if he signed an entry-level deal and then was released for his rfa as a low elite 
I wouldn't sign him to a one or two year deal. Makes sense? I think that's fair. Um, if you don't, let me know in the comments. I completely understand. Uh, I want to take a look over here. Mavericks leading their division again, 105 points. They don't have the Presence Trophy. Uh, Adam Lowry leading things off. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. Any of those big names stand out to us. Uh, we'll focus on their playoff run here in a bit. Ben Dehan, uh did quite well. Card had 50 points. Barabal, Poirier, Olvisad, Little had 44. Uh, Ranta had 40. Uh, yeah, don't hate it in goal. That's the biggest thing. Malpi, great numbers. Satan, great numbers. Yeah, can't be too upset by that. They're both medium elites. That was the point, was to get them this shot uh, and hopefully see some major, major growth from them this year. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So let's go ahead. 50, 27, and 5 on the season. Great job, team. Great job. Um, so let's go ahead and take a quick look here at goal scoring points leaders. Uh, be really nice to see anything entire league. Who we got Jack Eichel with 116 points, Barzell with 110, uh, Jose Goulas with 106 and then Volkov as well. Uh, 67, 68 goals for Eno Tolofsson in uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Kanapka 105. Um, I'm trying to find the, the third Islanders player. Did I miss it already? Was he up there already? Or am I just silly? Eichel, so Barzell, Tollefson. No. Okay, so we have the highest scoring first line. 100%. Because Eichel, it was 116. Olsen was 103. And then... Again, you're out of the hundreds. So, oh, there you go. Reinhardt had 93. So that 16 points that he had doesn't match up. Uh, let's see. I know LA was up... But they were all down here, yeah. So, yeah. No, we have the highest scoring first line. Uh, 116 points. Most goals, obviously, going to Tol Tolofsson with... Yeah, insane. Uh, let's go rookie skaters. 62 points for Oleski. Dude, I don't even know if we had anybody. Oh, we did. Ekholm had 19. Uh, we tried to put him in a position to succeed, and it did not work out for him, however. Uh, rookie goalies, Hamill, uh, not terrible, but that's definitely not going to get him uh, any decent numbers. So let's go ahead and get into the postseason. I uh, don't care about you anymore, team. You suck. No. Much better than I thought you were going to do. Much better than last season. Laval up first. And we get the big win, 6-1. Tony Nato's got two. Uh, game two against Laval. Let's see how this one goes. It's another win, 3-2. Kirk Card now has four points in two games. Uh, we are now in Laval for game three. Can we win it and sweep? We do, 4-2. Kirk Card with another point, another goal. Good for him. We are the first team through, it seems, in our division. We would like to place... Well, it doesn't really matter, I think. Uh, looking for one more game on that side, and the series is over. We are going to face the Toronto Marlies in round two. They were 42, 30, and 10 on the season. Last set, last 10 before the playoffs was 7 and 3. So we'll take a look here and see how this goes. 9-4 to four win against the Marlies in Game 1. 2-1 to win, uh, <laughs> overtime win in Game 2. And now in Toronto for Game 3. Let's see how that goes. That's another win. 4-1. to one. Hudson Fashion with 7 points in 6 games. Game 4 still in Toronto. Can they take it home? And they do. That's the second round sweep. And it looks like Hartford Wolfpack uh, may be our... Uh, 
dance partners for the semifinals. Uh, we were waiting for Ontario and Stockton to finish their series, and it does look like the Wolfpack is coming to dance. Texas and Ontario. Kansas City and Hartford. All right, all right, all right, all right. Kirk Card has eight points in seven games. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and see. We had almost identical seasons. They had more overtime losses than us. We lose game one, two to one. Game two in Hartford. Let's see how this goes. That's another loss, five to three. Game number three, we get the win of four to two at home. Back at home here for game four. Can we take it? And we do. So back on the road, home team has won every game this series. Let's see if we can break that streak right now. We don't. Five to four loss. Uh, back at home in Kansas City. We got to win this game to stay alive. Henrik Olvestad has 11 points in 12 games. Let's lean on him heavily here, and we lose two to one. Henrik, we're, we're leaning on you, and you got no points, my guy. No, I'm just joking, dude. You did fantastic. I appreciate all y'all. Um, you know, not too bad for this team of misfits. Uh, ben Dehan had nine. Ranta had seven. Cody Little had nine. Hudson Fashing had ten. Lowry had nine. Alvisad had eleven. Dwight Cook had eleven. Tony Nato had nine. Like seven, four, six, four. Like even this bot, like this bottom line of misfits, isn't terrible. Um, don't see anything there. I hate. And in goal, Maltby was fantastic. It was just the better team won. I guess slightly better team won. Like honestly, they won two more games in overtime to be the slightly better team. Uh, not much that can be done about that. Let's go ahead and keep simming through. Let's see here. Hartford has won two so far. Ontario has won one. My goodness, who's gonna win? Is it going to be Hartford here? It is. Hartford Wolfpack have won. And the New York Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers are going into the game four. In the Stanley Cup final. Who's going to win here? Ooh. Oilers win one to not get swept. Can they win another to bring it even closer? They do. Can they tie it up here in game number six? They do not. New York Rangers are your Stanley Cup champions. And the Calder Cup champions are the Hartford Wolfpack. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to Google this right now. Because that's what I do in the middle of things. Hartford Wolfpack is a nice hockey team. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Their affiliates are the New York Rangers. The New York Rangers have done it. They won both championships in a single season. We will take a look here at the awards. Uh, obviously the Rangers. Uh, Flyers win the President's Trophy, and we know all that good stuff over there. Individual awards. Jack Eichel winning the Art Ross. Hart. Uh, Heiskanen winning the Norris. Lady Bing going to Barzell. Calder going to Ale Alexi. Elias Anderson winning Conn Smythe. Carter Hart winning the Vesna and the Jennings. Logan Stanley winning the Masterton in Pittsburgh. Uh, Jack Adams going to Buffalo's head coach. Perfetti winning the Selkie, Jakaika winning the Lindsay, and Tolison obviously winning the Richard. Uh, so we get nothing done there, unfortunately. We'll look over here. Uh, the only award we get is for the FG Teddy Oki Award for our winning the North Division. Fantastic. All right, let's take a look here and see if we win anything. We don't. <laughs> All right, well, that's the season. Unfortunately, we will go ahead and sim up to this day right here, Wednesday the 20th of June. Go through some salary cap stuff. We'll get to the goods. Uh, Minnesota jumps 8-1, to one, Carolina 4-2, to two, and Arizona drops. So we sit at 11. Uh, 
was hoping that we were a bit higher up. Maybe we get some luck this year. Unfortunately, luck does not fall our way very often here in Tulsa. Just like the rain. I mean, I don't know if it rains in Tulsa. Probably rains everywhere, right? All right, we are heading up to retirement day. Don't think we're losing anybody. I don't have anybody super old. Uh, but we will take a look at who retired players are. Uh, Patty Kane retires after winning a cup. Voracek, Hall, Duchesne, Nugent Hopkins, Johansson, Carlson, Couturier, Trocek, Arvidsson, Evander Kane, and Brian Russ, to name a few. On D, you're losing the likes of OEL, Klingberg, Falk, Ristolainen, and Clefbaum, Pareko, Ryan Murray. Get, get out of here, Pareko. We know we don't like you from our, our Marie Leclerc series, our Be a Pro series. If you haven't checked that out, I'll link it above. And uh, yeah, losing some big names there. And in goal, obviously losing the likes of Freddie Anderson, Kudobin. Uh, Jack Campbell's retiring the same year as Freddie Anderson, and they're the same overall. Casey DeSmith, Phil Venus Copley, and the like. So some big names, some little names, just like every year. Uh, not losing anybody in KC. How about down in Tulsa? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. So nobody's retiring from her coaching staff. Let's go to the draft class interviews. Um, so we'd be losing out on somebody like Amari Riley, who would be fantastic next to our boy. Brent Burns comparison, my goodness. Uh, Colin McLaren would be a nice second pickup. Uh, Jeffrey Downey would be sick. Another Brent Burns comparison, but on the left side. Um, and then, yeah. Did I not have anyone in Russia this season? Uh, Jameson Bisonice, Theo Fleury comparison. I don't hate that. Um, these are probably three I'm going to look at. Uh, Liam Axelson, Tears Out, Voracek comparison, I don't hate. But obviously the other guy, Ryan McDonough comparison, three years out, not liking that as much. Cooper House, Chuck, Tears Out, Vlasic comparison on the left side. Um, yeah, I don't see you as an elite. Uh, Markstrom. You hear Reimer three years out. Like, I don't hate it, but there's a better guy up there. And I'd rather spend some of that looking around here. If I can get Bartosak in the second round, I won't hate that. All right, I'm not like super excited about any of these players and I don't want to waste anything if I don't have to. Um, so there's some goalies that are available to us as well. Yeah, I'm gonna, sorry. Whew. See, this is why I didn't want to sim ahead because I've done that before where I've screwed up. Uh, so I'm going to look at these three players and we're just going to look at type. That's the main thing. We're going to see if anybody is confirmed. If they're confirmed as a two-way, then we will look into it a little bit further. What do you like to know about your playstyle? You are offensive defensemen, so we will leave you alone, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, man. Strengths. Weaknesses. Sometimes it's just easier. Okay. All right, and that combo. Alexei Dodonov. Uh, Ilya Alexiev. Let's take a look at your play style, good sir. Ivan Alexiev. Uh, playmaker. New topic. Bye, Ivan. Thank you for coming today. 17, though, would have been a nice pickup. Uh, Alexander Grachev. Uh, Playstyle. 
play style power forward all right so none of these russians are worth it thank you alexander i appreciate it i appreciate it so honestly jameson bisonized uh, probably somebody we are looking at over everybody else uh, and then another guy in the other one so i think we're ready to get into the draft here uh, let's not uh, hold this up anymore except by looking at progress reports all right let's take a look here antonovich volkov trent smith is now an 88 that is fantastic yeah, lots of natural and statistical growth. Kanapka is now a 90 again. Medium elite. Uh, we have four first line forwards. A starting goalie is now an 81. He went down this season, obviously. Uh, Gage Holland. Uh, Connor Brown is regressing. He won't be here much longer, but I would like him to stay until he retires. Connor, how old are you, man? 35. Should be very soon, actually. Um, so not too bad. So let's go ahead and jump into the draft as I said we would before. Um, and we will just sim to pick 11 because we don't trade up. All right, so Jeffrey Downey went, he went fifth to 11th, ninth. Are you kidding me right now? So 76 and a 73 medium elite. Dodonov went, then Downey was a 76, then Alexiev. Wow, these are not great, great players in the first round. We got a 72 overall in Bison Ice. Uh, fairly well-rounded offensive awareness. He will definitely be playing in the AHL for some time. Uh, I don't remember where he got drafted out of. I guess we could look right here, USA. So yeah, he will not have to go to juniors. That is fantastic. We will sim into the next round. And hopefully, I think Hino is the guy we were looking at, or Crane. Uh, yeah. Tristan Morrison isn't terrible. Man, can I look at that guy quickly? It was, yeah, either one of these guys. Kent Crane would have been solid. Hino would have been fantastic. Uh, maybe. I mean, maybe. Oh, that sucks. All right, well, then I guess we're going to have to decide something else. So let's see who else is available to us. Shovel Dave. Uh-huh. Jala, Jerdev, Fenton is here. Uh, two A in Taylor, who is a low six. Not the greatest overall. <laughs> You're a butterfly, you jerk. Uh, but we'll take a look at what is available to us. All right, so no more since three years out. Mark how comparison shoots on the left side. Not terrible. I don't hate it. Four years out, eighteen for Oldrich Yars. Um, can't skate. Uh, Nick Fenton, nope. Uh, Zherdev, nope. Rajala, Lassie Rajala, mm, probably not low elite. Uh, Jalen Marshall, nope. Uh, Culp, okay, don't hate Eddie Culp, backland comparison. Uh, Doug Taylor, I don't hate either. Shevel Dave. Mike Smith comparison, I don't also hate, but might just be a starter, uh, which is a risk. Plus, we have three elite goalies coming up right now. I don't necessarily think we need anybody this season, possibly. Um, he's definitely, he's only three years out, though, and at, at 18, Kalpi is 17, and he's three years out back in comparison. Possibly a nine though. All right. So I think it's going to be between Culp. I don't really need another lefty. I need more forwards. So we're going to go with Eddie Culp. 
and he is a medium nine. I'm just going to take a quick look here because there were some players that I was interested in and I just want to see how bad we screwed up. Morrison was a medium four. He would have been the guy to get. Um, let's see. Shovel Dave was a medium elite. But again, what's his weakness? Like everything. Like his reflexes are so bad. Uh, let's see. Marshall was a medium six, that's fine. Rajala was a low four, so that's fine. Um, Fenton was a medium elite, and he was a f slightly better. Uh, Taylor was a low six. I mean, yeah, we should have gone for the defender, but we're obviously quite oversaturated on lefties, so I'm trying not to. <laughs> do that to ourselves um, and there's some goalies there if we need to make a decision quite a few we need a little bit of extra time on this one I think I'm just going to add a timeout here in the third round. All right, so let's make a pick here. Let's take a look at... Nope. Yeah, all forwards. So we'll take all the forwards here. Matnin. I don't hate that at 17. Uh, Pinnell. Nope. I'm sorry. 18, Rocky Holland. Okay, Rocky Holland might be the guy. Mark QA. No. I don't like you enough. Same with J Sim. Uh, let's go defense. We are looking at three guys here. Paulson. Uh, no, you're gone. Caden Seal. Yeah, no defenseman here. And in goal, this is where there's a couple more. Alright, so Dawes, Owen Wong, no, you're too much of a risk. Possibly four years out at 19. Again, I don't think we need a goalie. Both these guys are probably medium elites. But they're not going to be good enough till they're 24, and then they're only going to get to like an 84, 85, maybe and I just don't see it as worth it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at who is left. There is Matnin or Rocky Holland. And I think it's Rocky Holland all day. Rocky Holland is a low six, however, I feel he may be able to do something. He's a big boy, 6'4", 194 pounds, I don't hate it. Um, let's go ahead and sim to the next pick here, pick 107, and we'll take a look back because we can always do any or timeout if we need to. Earl, Unila, uh, let's go here. Sim was a medium nine. Uh, Obergauer, no thank you. Uh, Matinin was a low six as well. That's who else we were looking at, so... Uh, don't hate what we did. Uh, let's see. If and again, if Kraus was, yeah. Uh, Wong was a medium starter. Dawes was a elite. Um, yeah, we knew Dawes was not going to be good, right? So, um, Iliakis was good. But again, 19 years old, four years out. Uh, Bruin was a medium six. Marcourt was a medium six. Uh, phrase, yeah, so we, we did fine there. All right, so we are looking at Verdino, Lombardi, Strachan, um, nope, Harold Pyatt, maybe, Astapolis, and Bishop. Um, we'll take a look at Durrett, but I don't think we'll go after him. And no, 
I'm just not even going to chance it. Grenier. Uh, Chiang, not going to chance it with that. Brindamore. And Mightnin. And just double checking. I'm going to put you in here anyway. All right. Mateo Holmes, get out of here. All right. Xavi Bishop. Uh, no. Actually, let's just go forwards again. It's a little bit easier. Uh, Lombardi. I don't hate 1823, though. Uh, Marku Maitnen. I don't know. Don't really like that. Don't like that either. Verdino. Can't skate. Slightly physical. Yeah, Brindermore was 20. Not worth it. All right, let's go take a look at Defenders. Mateo Holmes. Doesn't really make good decisions. 510 Defender. Hmm. And then Net. All right, so both goalies are kind of meh. All right, who's left? Lombardi. All right, apparently I ran out of time. Fantastic. Love when that happens. Well, you suck. They all sucked anyway, so I don't really care. All right, moving on. <laughs> Uh, you guys were probably screaming at me the whole time, being like, you idiot, the... Pay attention. Alright, we're just gonna move to potential base now, I think. It's probably the best idea. Uh, Brindamore, 19, not terrible. Too bad you are not what we're looking for. So now we do this again. All right, so Marku Maitnen. Uh, didn't we look at already? 19, meh. McKinnon, meh. Brindamore. Ahmad Persinger, though. Okay, I don't hate Ahmad. But we can get him a little bit later. Defensively, who are we looking at? Michael Keller. Okay, I don't hate both of you, so that's good. And so, let's go goalies. Brindo and Conacher. Okay, I like Conacher a lot. Much later. Okay, so let's do... All players around are we in? Are we in five? Yeah, round five. So we get three more picks. So we get three more picks. Uh, we are looking at... First off, we want to look, pick between Holmes and Grenier. Uh, Holmes. Yep, yeah, let's go with Mateo Holmes here. See how that goes for us. The American, low 6, 60 overall offensive defenseman. Fantastic. That did not work out how I wanted it to. Uh, Dykehouse there. Um, now we're going to move on to who is next. Uh, that would be Persinger, the low elite, possibly two-way forward. He is low elite. He's a 62 overall at 19. Quite a lot to do, but can stick check. And that's about it. So we'll go ahead and move on to pick number 203, our last pick of the draft. And hope for goodness that Braylon Burns, no, sorry, that Noel Conacher is the goaltender of our future. Low fringe, 62 overall. He is not. Uh, he is well-rounded, but unfortunately, Noel, you will not be making this team at any time in your career, sir. So, 
with that done, we definitely got a winner in Bison Ice. Um, and then from there, it really dropped off. Uh, but honestly, after you saw the first five picks in the draft, it wasn't really that decent anyway. Not much was going to happen. I will worry about all that fun stuff later. Let's take a quick look here at contracts and just determine how much work we're actually going to have to do. So we have 38 million available. Smith is going to need a deal. Uh, Jemil, you can go, sir. Trent is going to want quite a bit, I'm sure. Yeah, 11 million for himself. On left wing, Kanopka needs a deal. How much does he want? That's 14. So now we're at 25. We have 13 million left. Uh, Modine is getting his entry level. Yes. Okay, that's fantastic. Getting an 82 medium six forward here. Uh, Gage Holland needs a new deal. How much does he want? Okay, not terrible. Co needs a new deal. Like uh, Gerard, you can be released. You can be released. Right wingers. Let's see. Blonde and Little are going to need new deals. Hudson Fashion can go. Uh, let's see. Lambert's going to go for sure. I don't even want him here anymore. Um, probably Datsuk might go. Not quite sure what I'm going to do for the team here. Uh, Poirier, Stiff can go. Dixon is going to be getting a start. Uh, we're really going to have to pay attention to defenders uh, to make sure that we don't do that. And Macaulay needs a new deal, so that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Yeah, lots of work to be done there. And in goal, obviously Hamill and Leached. Uh, young guys here: Malpi a seventy-three, Shatan a sixty-nine, uh, Stromberg also medium elite. So. Getting Conacher really wasn't important to us. Uh, we will have to see what happens with what we're going to do here. So until next time, everybody, thank you for checking out uh, this episode of the Tulsa Boars Two Ways to Win Draft Glory franchise. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.